Chair. Choice people doing choice things. My name is Dr Melanie Shung and I'm a neurobiologist. Being a scientist is really just about being a tutu. I'm an innately curious person. I've been working with Māori communities that have Huntington's disease. Every child of somebody that has Huntington's disease has a 50% chance of getting the gene that will make them sick. I use experimental neuroscience, often growing cells or looking at human brain tissue to try and understand Huntington's disease. As a Māori person, I wasn't quite sure how I felt about working with human brain tissue. The brain is very tapu. Eight hours after somebody's passed away, we get their brain tissue. It's like the tapu intensifies a lot more once somebody passes away. They give us this taonga, the brain of their mum or dad or auntie and uncle. They say it gives them hope. We wouldn't be able to do the research that we do without those precious gifts. We had a hui with my iwi to talk about um, whether I could or couldn't work with the human brain tissue. The issue for my iwi was really around being protected spiritually. And that's when I started working with people like Nada Glavish and Wiramu Tafai, who taught me a lot about tapu and tikanga. Remember Nada Glavish said to me, you know, doing the tikanga is as much for you to feel comfortable with this process as it is to acknowledge the families who have given you this tissue and to acknowledge the grief that they're going through. Everyone kind of goes, whoa, you know, you do tikanga in the lab, you sing and pray really loudly and people stare at you sort of thing. And I do, I sing and I pray and, and that's what I do, but you know, I don't kind of do it in this weird kind of way that, you know, everyone around me is staring at me. The tikanga relates a lot to the science because when you learn to be a scientist, you learn to be methodical because that's the best way to do it. I was in America and I gave a presentation about this aspect of my research and a man stood up and he said um, that the Navajo um, elders had developed ceremonies for their Navajo um, med students. And I heard this and I just was kind of like, well, okay, so I'm not the only one that's struggling with this. People often think that being a scientist you have to be cutthroat, you have to be competitive and you, you know, but why can't we just be scientists that are loving and caring and, and care about families and people who, who are sick?